Greetings and welcome to another LGR Quickie. Today we've got a satisfying one because it was a game that I played on the Sega Genesis. <laughs> and that makes anything good. This is Chuck Rock 2, Son of Chuck. A game by Core Design from 1993. This is the Commodore Amiga version that only came out in Europe as far as I know. And why am I talking about this one instead of the first one first? Well, because screw the first game, it's pretty good. This, on the other hand, is great! As far as I'm concerned, it's... Like I said, I played this one as a kid. It was brand new, and it was like nothing else I'd ever played. It had this design that I like to call ball aesthetics. <laughs> I don't know what you really call it, but it had everything was made up of like balls, and very ball shapes, and had this weird shading going on to just everything. It made the animation look smooth. It made the characters look unique. So you play as a baby. In the first game you played Chuck Rock himself, and you're Chuck Jr. here, and you just go around with your uh, club. But what made this so charming was not the fact that you were a baby, but just the way that you interacted with the world. The way you could use that club to sort of stand up and get over things and swipe stuff, and uh, just collecting all the little candies everywhere. The satisfying little sound effects they would make when you grab the candies. The music, especially in the Sega Genesis version, which was absolutely charming in that sort of early 90s way. It was one of those things that made me think, man, I wish I had a Sega Genesis and not a DOS computer. And that's sad, because I love that DOS computer, but it did it have Chuck Rock 2? No, it didn't. It made me want this thing really badly. Now, there was also the Sega CD version, which has CD audio music and some, like, introductions, uh, cutscenes and stuff from, like, a cartoon but I don't care, because the music is different and you need the original music as far as I'm concerned. It's just better. There were just such a variety of places that you could go. Weird creatures you'd come into contact with, little things going on in the background, like the little, like the fat sumo guy that gets like stomped on by a dinosaur and the animals that you would ride and the, the little things like tossing a banana to a monkey to move him to get to like another area and stuff. You didn't have to do this but it was just neat to find all of these little extra places. It seemed to be a little bit more complex, at least in my mind, to what I was used to on the Sega Genesis, which was uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, mostly. And not nothing against Sonic. That game was friggin' amazing in its own right for completely different reasons, but this was a little bit slower paced. You had to really interact more directly with the environment in ways that weren't just jumping and dashing. Yeah, comparing it to Sonic the Hedgehog makes no sense whatsoever, but I'm just trying to think like I did when I was an eight-year-old. And that's really the only platformer that we had on uh, the Genesis at the time. Well, I didn't have it. It was at my friend's house, but I'd go over there and play it the most out of anything. Until, I guess, we got Sparkster. But that's a whole different video for another quickie, perhaps. This is just one that stands out immensely in my mind and it made me import this directly from Europe just to get this cool box and uh, to have the game with uh, this neat big manual that didn't come with the Sega Genesis version had no floppy disks and stuff ah it's just a special experience even today I like this game a lot and that is all I gotta say thank you very much for watching <laughs>